Welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get started with this M5 Stack Basic Core Development Kit. Now, this is a pretty cool little unit and I really like M5 Stack. They have a lot of very inexpensive products that really fill this tech niche that we're in on this channel and so I want to roll up my sleeves and do more with the M5 Stack products. First of all, I'm going to show you how to update the firmware with M5 Burner so that you can use the UI Flow Blocky Desktop IDE and you can also use the web version of UI Flow from any browser regardless of where you're at. So let's go ahead and unbox this product first. And you can see here all of the M5 Stack products come in a sturdy plastic case. So this is the core basic unit. You got three buttons here. Now this isn't a touch panel. It's just a display panel. There's your USB-C connection. There's a Grove connector. There's the power switch. Now there's a bunch of pins going in and a bunch of pins going out. And you see here we got a bunch of jumpers and you also got the USB-C cable in there. <laughs> you got a couple of M5 stack stickers there. And if you want to give your M5 stack core a number, you can attach one of these numbers to it, I guess. And that's all you get in the kit. But for the price, you're getting this ESP32 device with the display, three buttons, uh, various interfaces. And like I say, M5 stack has a lot of inexpensive, simple modules that you can add on to your project. So now we're going to use the M5 burner to burn the firmware onto our core device. So I'm going to open M5 burner. So it's already detected the COM port here. We're going to select core. Now we want to install the UI flow firmware. And it's basically going to give us the interface we need so that we can program this device with UI flow, whether we use the desktop UI flow or the web-based UI flow. So I've downloaded the latest version for the core basic. In your configuration, you can include your Wi-Fi SSID and password here. And then that way, every time you turn on your M5 stack core, it's going to connect to your Wi-Fi. Then let's go ahead and burn it. Again here it's prompting me for the Wi-Fi setting. And we start. So this is essentially the underlying operating system that lets you upload other programs to this device. We'll go through the basic menu here once the firmware loads up. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the power button. Right away, hit that button where it says UI Flow, and now you enter into the UI Flow interface, essentially. And here we can choose whether or not we're going to connect over the Internet or the USB. I'm going to go ahead and connect over the Internet here, and then let's go down and we'll reboot. And then we go back in, you see we're connecting up to our Wi-Fi. And then we have our API key. You see the Wi-Fi is lit, the internet's available. We have the API key that we would use to connect our core to the web interface. In flow.m5stack.com, the web-based UI flow, the first thing you're going to do is connect via your API key. Oh, it's already got it. Okay, so we're connected. Yeah, see down here, it's showing me my API key from my particular core device. Okay, so we could use this blocky UI flow web-based interface now that we're connected to our M5 stack core using the API key. If we didn't have this information already, we would be prompted for which device we're going to use and what's the API key. So that's how to use the M5 burner to set up your device on Wi-Fi, update it with the latest UI flow firmware, and then 
you can connect to it either through the web-based UI flow or the desktop-based UI flow. So now I'm going to close this out so that we're not contending for that COM13 serial port. I'm going to cancel out of here. We're going to use the desktop based. I'm just going to leave that page there. So here you're going to get these from the download section of the m5stack.com website. And I've downloaded these and I've just essentially put them in their own folder on my C drive. You can get fancier than this, but I'm just running them as executables. They don't really install necessarily. They just run as executable so you could make a little shortcut on your desktop etc because we have it set up for Wi-Fi we're going to go back into the setup here and switch the mode to USB then we're gonna reboot and now you can see the little USB icon so we're ready to use the desktop UI flow so I'm gonna say yeah use UI flow it detects the serial port and I'm going to make sure it's selected the right device and you can see we're connected. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about getting started with the M5 stack core in UI flow. You use M5 burner to install the firmware. You can set the M5 stack firmware to either use Wi-Fi or USB. Your device is always connected to your home Wi-Fi because you've put that in there. So let's check out an example program here. So first I'm going to power this off by pushing the button twice. There we go. Well, there we go. That's off. So I've got this GPS module and this is going to connect to the M5 stack core via the Grove port here. Again here, this just came in its own little plastic case with its own Grove connector. I just want to show you the simplicity of this UI flow software that lets you develop pretty sophisticated user interfaces. Let's look at an example I just created for the GPS module. And now we're going to talk through this a little bit. So over here, you see a representation of the graphics interface, the user interface, and you develop that by dragging labels. See, you can drag labels onto this screen and place them. Once you've placed a label, you can actually go in and set very specific X and Y coordinates for it. They even have, wow, I didn't even notice that. They have layers rotation, you could select the font, and then I've dragged these lines in as well, and these lines have X and Y coordinates for the beginning and the end, and you can see, wow, they even occupy a layer. Let's look past the blocky into the Python, so you can see the X and Y coordinates of my text labels, the X and Y coordinates of the lines on the screen, and this is a reasonably sophisticated user interface for this GPS example. You can also see that the program has saved the fact that I'm using the GPS module and I've selected the custom port with TX and RX. There are other ports. I had it. It says port C on the back of the device, but it didn't do anything for me. So I clicked custom and when I clicked custom, it came back like that. And I just left it like that, and now it works. So here, I'm going to show the GPS positioning quality at label zero, which is this first space. There's text. Oops, label one. Okay, so I got these reversed. I'm just going to flip this. Whoops. It's never that easy, is it? <laughs> I'm going to flip these around so we can talk through this a little easier. There we go. So I did get a little out of order here, but I'm going to show in this first physical position here, label 1 is going to show the number of satellites. Label 0 is going to show the positioning quality. That's here, label 0. Label 2 is going to be the time. That's here. And then 
we're going to, oh, you see right there, we can adjust these. That looks like that got dragged out of place. There we go. I can set the X and Y coordinates of the text. And then the last two positions are going to be my latitude and longitude. This somehow is an extra scrap laying on the floor. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Let's go ahead and upload this to our M5 stack core device with the GPS module attached. And we see the upload was a success. Here we see the user interface building up and you can see GPS data is already coming in. I'm going to hold this up a little closer and you can see GPS data is already coming in. We've got five satellites. Signal quality is good. We know what time it is and we're starting to get longitude and latitude data. And I'll have to blur that out so you don't know where I am. Okay, so that was remarkably easy to set up this rather sophisticated user interface and access this GPS module. I've done this sort of thing before in Raspberry Pi. I've done this sort of thing before in Arduino, but it was never this remarkably easy, especially to create, you know, such a sophisticated user interface that's very clear and, and legible. So I hope you've enjoyed getting started with the M5 Stack Basic Core UI Flow, the M5 Burner to install the UI Flow firmware. And stay tuned and thank you very much. So make sure to check all the links in the description down below. Please subscribe, check out some of these other videos, and thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shitoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.